How your videos look matters more than you might think. According to research, it takes less than a second for people to decide if they like and trust you. And in this world where attention is everything. Attention is so just powerful. Attention is the new oil. The success of your online presence depends as much on how you look as the actual spoken content itself. So today we're gonna go through eight things you didn't realize your video setup was saying about you to your audience and how to easily fix them. This video is actually based on my most viral Twitter thread of all time, which was shared by thousands of people and seen by over 4 million, which is crazy to me. Go follow me by the way, if we're not already connected. So chances are, if you watch to the end of this video, you'll walk away with at least one thing you can do to immediately improve how you come across on camera. It's a small time investment that will pay you dividends infinitely for decades to come. All right, so number one, super important, your camera angle. So many people have their cameras mounted above their monitors and it looks down at you. And when your camera does this, it destroys your credibility. You put your audience in the perspective of a superior, peering over, say, your cubicle, checking in on your work, literally looking down at you. So to establish more authority, lower your camera to chin height. You don't wanna to go too low so now they're looking up your nose. That'll make you feel overbearing. But you wanna have some healthy medium where they're not looking down at you nor too far up at you. In this way, you wanna really intentionally design how your viewer sees you. Don't leave this up to chance because it matters so much more than many people think. Next, we've got this familiar scene here, the infamous beige generic white wall. 90% of what we do on video is signaling. It's showing intentionality that you put effort into your content. And what do we associate this blank white wall with? It's actually the opposite of that. It's cutting corners and not caring about the viewer's experience. So. Consider painting your wall if you can. If not, wallpaper and adding colored lights can work too. In Steph's case here, we chose gray paint and used RGB lighting to play with color. There's so much you can do when you just decide to be a little bit more intentional. And then we have how you arrange your background items behind you. Clumping your items behind your head instead of spreading things out more. Grouping all your decor behind your head makes your space feel smaller. And it's ironic because by creating more space around the edges of your shot where it's empty, your shot actually now feels more claustrophobic because it feels like you're sitting in this sparse empty room and you just gathered all the stuff you own right behind you and everything else is empty. As a result of this, your audience is gonna feel trapped and pretty uncomfortable. Almost like going to your friend's house who didn't quite move in all the way yet, and you're like, where do I sit? What do I do? I'm just kinda standing here. So instead, do the opposite. Create space behind you, but fill up the rest of the frame. And for bonus points, extend your items off the edge of the screen, and that makes your space feel even larger. Build this sense of a bigger world off camera, and it'll create a sense of home for your viewer beyond just what they can see. And as a quick side note here, there's a very common question I always get from our clients and folks who take my Dream Studio course, and that is, Kevin, my space is super tiny. Can I still set up a nice studio? Am I still qualified to do this too? And my answer is, absolutely. You can totally do it if you know what you're doing and you understand the principles like I'm teaching you here. You'd be surprised actually how much you can do with camera and lens magic, understanding design, and looking through some space saving gear options. As a matter of fact, to prove this point, I even went and set up a studio in the tiniest closet I could find. Click up here to watch that video if you're curious. Next, when it comes to microphones, putting barriers between ourselves and others is actually a defensive gesture. One that I personally admit that I do a lot with my hands as an anxious, fidgety person. Yet what this does is it creates a psychological sense of distance. So instead, place your mic to the side instead of in front of your face. Or better yet, use a shotgun mic like I am right up here to capture sound from outside the frame. So there is nothing blocking you from your audience. And this is what we did here with Jay. Now, one of the biggest tips I have for you is on lighting. So let's do an experiment real quick. Take a look at this mug shot. We associate this deer in the headlights look with criminals and guilt, or in this case, one of my favorite TV shows, Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Nice. And now I want you to look at the average Zoom video. I'm just gonna leave that there. So to avoid looking like a deer in the headlights, use lighting to create depth and not remove it. I wanna say that one more time. Use lighting to create depth, not remove it. Your job is not to throw as much light as you possibly can as if the person can't see you. Your job is to use light and shadow to create a sense of depth. And the best way to do this, move your lights away from center to more so the one or two o'clock position and don't mirror them symmetrically if you have more than one. 
you do not want a symmetrical lighting setup in front of you. One side should have more light than the other so that your lighting can sort of fall off in one direction. And for bonus points, raise your light higher to create a more softer, flattering feel. I call this the shampoo commercial look. Now, in the same way, you also wanna be careful with the light sources directly behind you. We associate dark, shadowy silhouettes with villains or say the witness protection program. We as humans can't connect with faces that we can't see. If we can't see your face, we can't build trust. So instead, sit with your face towards the window or better yet, Close the window and use lights because they're more consistent. Your studio will be ready to look great at a moment's notice any time of day and will serve as a workflow productivity asset for you instead of something preventing you from getting out there and making content. Another mistake people make, this one is not so obvious, but it's a fun one. It's having doors in your background. This can cause people to feel like you're about to be interrupted. So it prevents people from going deep and having a real moment with you. It's kind of like having phones out on the dinner table. This makes it harder to be fully present with you. So if you happen to have a door in your space, which I can't imagine not, try turning your desk around so your camera points away from doors and other distractions. This pulls the viewer's eyes towards your face, pulls their attention towards you and what you have to say, and not away from you. If you can make them feel like you two are the only two people in the world, you'll have a much more powerful human connection with your audience. And finally, this is perhaps my favorite one of them all, using lighting to set the tone of the interaction, to share the heart behind your content and help the person feel that you truly care about them as people, not just merely metrics on a screen. So to illustrate just how powerful this is, I wanna do a small experiment with you. So close your eyes, and I want you to imagine walking into a dingy motel lobby with harsh flickering fluorescent lights hanging above you. The light is sort of this harsh greenish yellow and has a buzz to it. All right, got it? Pay attention to how you feel in your body. Pay attention to how tense you are. Pay attention to the state that you find yourself in. Got it? Okay, now let's imagine something else to contrast with that. This time it's a different lobby. This time it's a cozy ski lodge with a warm fireplace and a warm soft glow from the lights above and around you. Now in both situations, imagine someone you've never met before comes up to you. In which setting are you more open to connecting with that person? In the first situation, your body actually goes into this fight or flight mode and that harsh lighting and that environment elevates your stress hormone cortisol and it puts you in a defensive state. Your body is actually gonna be telling you Keep some distance, do not engage with this person, just get out alive. Now in the second situation, your body is going to be a lot more open to connection, more willing to listen, to help, and form bonds with others, and less of a sense of scarcity to immediately disengage and move on to something else. You see, lighting, as well as the design of your space, affects your viewer's biochemistry. And I want you to let that sink in for a second. How cool is that? That you can affect someone's biochemistry from thousands of miles away through a video, you can connect in real human ways as if you were standing right there in front of them. And that right there is the power of video, the power of lighting, the power of crafting an overall experience intentionally for your viewer. Because whether we're interacting in real life or through a screen, at the end of the day, honestly, we're just people. We value connecting with other real people. And I can go all philosophical on you guys, but it's just such a powerful thing you can do. And video can be this tool, this task, when we get to connect with real people and interact in this way. So at the end of the day, all this stuff that I'm teaching you here on this channel and in this video goes far deeper than just looking good on camera. It's all about connecting with other people on the internet. So there you have it. Take care of these mistakes and you'll start to see a big difference in your content. Now to take your setup to the next level, check out this video where I break down how Masterclass just always looks so, so professional. Click right here.